Hello again. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about making multi-user applications. Last time, we built a to-do list app. It works great, but it's only good for one user. There's only one list of things to do, and anyone who has the secret URL can see and edit it. Today, we're going to take that app and turn it into a multi-user application, so anyone can sign up and everyone has their own separate to-do list. Here's the app we built last time. We've updated it to our new look and feel, but it's the same code. The first thing we'll need is the users service. This makes it easy to register and log in users. Each registered user will show up as a row in our users table. Second, we want each user to see their own private to-do items, rather than all seeing the same list. We'll do this by recording, for each reminder, which user it belongs to. We'll add a link column to the reminders table, linking to a single row in the users table. Let's call it owner. Right, now we want to make the user log in when they open this app. Let's go to the code. When the form is constructed, before it's displayed, the code in the init method runs. In this method, we can call anvil.users.loginWithForm. This shows a login form. It returns none if they cancel. We don't want to allow that, so we'll put this in a loop, and we'll keep showing the form until the user logs in. OK, now we've got the user logged in. We want to make sure that we show them the right reminders. Most importantly, though, we want to make sure they can't see anyone else's reminders. So we'll look at the reminders table. Now, last time, we made this table completely accessible to form code. The problem is that any visitor to our app can change the form code to do whatever they like. This is fine for single-user apps, where we use Anvil's secure sharing features. For private apps, only someone with this secret link can access the app. But for multi-user apps, this would mean anyone could see or delete anyone else's data. Instead, we're going to disable direct access from form code and rely on server modules. Server modules are trustworthy. No one can change them except the author of the app, and that's us. We're going to use a feature of Anvil called Client Writable Views. If a data table has a column telling us who owns each row, we can get a filtered version of this table with only one user's data. We can then give the client code access to this view. If we allow it, they can even update this rows or add new ones. But they don't have access to anybody else's data. So let's make a server module to give access to this view. We'll make a server function called getReminders that returns a client writable view of the reminders for the currently logged in user. We call anvil.users.getUser to find out who's logged in. This returns a row from the users table, so we can access any of its columns, and it returns none if nobody's logged in. So as long as there is someone logged in, we can take apptables.reminders and return a client writable view of all the rows where the owner is the logged in user. Now all we need to do is call that function from the init method after the user logs in. We'll store this user's reminders as self.myreminders. Self.myreminders is a client writable view, but we can treat it just like a data table. We can search it instead of apptables.reminders, and we can add rows to it too. Let's click Run and see what we've built. We have to log in, so let's sign up for an account. We'll need email confirmation, so let's open our email. We'll click the link to verify our email address. And here we are, back in the app. Now we can log in with our new account, and we can add and edit reminders just like before. We're still reading and writing rows from the reminders table, right here in the event handlers for these buttons and checkboxes. But if we log in as somebody else, we'll see a completely different set of reminders. If we look at the data table, we'll see that all the reminders are there, but we only gave users access to their own rows. Now we can make this application public, confident that every user's data is kept separate and secure. Thanks for watching. There's so much more you can do with the user's service and data tables, so make sure to subscribe to our email course for more tutorials and guides. See you next time.